the way we are wired. O another fact here is that almost uh, all of four year olds have imaginary friends. So that's the idea of like creating my like minds where they don't exist because you're imagining the mind of someone else that you're interacting with. So understanding the mind body split and attachment system is one of the first parts of this. Okay, that's all for chapter four. Did you have any thoughts or comments? Uh, thing with imaginary friends, like for me, I, I draw a lot. Maybe I'll put, I might yeah. put it up on the screen right now. With, with my, like, I created this entire universe of, of characters and people, and it took me some time to realize that I had actually, this was things based off of my life and my world that, that were helping me make sense out of my existence. And it wasn't really just, and because it was initially based off of Final Fantasy, the game series, and then the other things. And it was primarily because I was having this relationship that was falling apart. So I created this world where me and my current ex, me and the ex, me and the person I was dating at that time, we had a relationship that had struggles, but I was able to fix it within the parameters of those known knowns that I had in that in that thing. And because there was too many unknowns in actual reality, and just from that building that up, I finally realized that oh, it's not. I'm not basing it off of that. That other stuff that I thought I was basing this on is actually just the structure that I was trying to make sense. I was trying to. In, it was actually based on my life and my thing. And I started realizing these characters are not necessarily based off of these characters from the video game. Instead, these are amalgams or people to people put together of the people that I knew in my life. And to make sense of who this, these different people were, I was like, okay, they're like that person in this thing. So in, in, essentially I was creating this entire existence, entire universe, and I'm, I still use that. And to me, that ability to do that is similar to that imaginary friends thing. I remember when we were kids, me and my brother, we, when, once we left France and we got to Kenya, we used to play in these tents, these, these forts, <laughs> like blanket forts, and we'd have um, imaginary characters that we shared. Like, I would have like three or four characters that I'd play. He would play three or four characters. We'd interact together and things like that. And that's something most people did as kids, but then they become adults and they stop. Yeah. I kind of never really stopped. And most people switch that over to their gods and things like that. And they, they feel, they seem to feel there's some separation between that and the, the imaginary friends and gods. I, when, when I say that, to a child, the imaginary friend is not true, doesn't exist, but it's still an important being to them. It still helps them make sense of the world, yeah. but they're not real. So with the adults, you can have your imaginary friend. Call him Yahweh, call him Allah, call him Jehovah. You can, you can, they can, that imaginary friend can be important to you, can help you make you sense out of life, but they're not real. Just like when I talk about car, the Carbon Universe, the, those characters, the new one, those people, those people aren't real. And there was, there was a time where it was like, I, the concept of the thing was like, what if you wake up and that stuff's actually real? Like, and some of that helped me make sense out of these things. And now I've seen certain things to some people, Star Wars, to some people, Marvel Comics with Superman and uh, Captain America and, and these characters, Star Trek, these different things have that similar type of, like the Harry Potters, they have this similar type of religious um, minds, religious aspects to certain people where they, they fit in and they fill in that same need. And there's many things that I've seen coming up in books and stories. I mean, it's the Lord of the Rings stories. To me, is a more amazing, amazing creation story of how the earth came to be. Like that was Middle Earth. And then like now Middle Earth, once the, the elves went off, went away uh, to that other land and things like that, then Middle Earth was left to the humans and the dwarves kind of went away and things. So the, you to me, that's even more interesting than the Bible and stuff. But I'm thinking there's, there's very many stories that are recently told that were less plot holes, that are more substantial to what we know about the world and the entire field of sci-fi, that is my favorite uh, epic sci-fi, that's my favorite genre of books to actually get into. That kind of field, I see those things that are being created now that are still very valuable and still help people, that if that was just knocked back a few years back, J.K. Rowling would have had her own religion. You know, like George Lucas would have had his own religion. Yeah. Like these, they were just coming up with stories of trying to make sense of human existence, human life, of existence of the reality, and it would help people. And for some people, that's why I think you see some people when they try to change some of these things. Around, like, no, no, it, Luke is Luke. Like the midpoint is the real. The force is the force. And then for some people, it's like, no, we're just selling toys. But but for 
imagine for some Christians, if you're just like, no, Jesus is all of a sudden just some female. Like, hey, what does it matter? <laughs> like, is this some female who's going to come up and we're just selling crosses? No, for that, and I think that's that's something that I think people need to realize. Like, these are stories that are told, and where does it change from just being a story? Where does it change from being a religion? When does it change from being um, something spiritual? When does it change from being belief in a God? Like, that's that's the kind of uh, interesting thing to see that, that happens in this whole storytelling that, that we have. Well, yeah. it's interesting, too, because Jordan Peterson has mentioned that this is why superhero movies are popular, because the decline in religion, but people feel that need to look up to those magical, powerful figures. And, you know, he's drawing from uh, Jungian myth interpretation. I think Jung's myth interpretation was a bit more interesting, though, because... Peterson mostly ties it into Christianity, whereas I feel like Jung was a bit more broad. Like he talked about why do certain religious themes occur throughout the world and all these cultures that never interacted? Like why do these people have a fertility God? Why do these people have like a thunder God? Why do these people have a God of war? Like all these people who've never interacted, there are certain archetypes that kept reoccurring. We'll get into that a little bit in one of the next sections, but I thought that's interesting. Like the idea that all these people never interacted, yet there's certain themes showing up in their pantheons. And I know when the Romans conquered other people, they didn't mind those other people following their own religions, except the Jews. That's a whole conversation. But because they saw it as, well, OK, the Celts have a war god. The Germanic tribes have a war god. Um, you know, the the other tribes have a god king that looks like Zeus. So it's like in their head, they see it as, oh, they're just worshiping our gods, but they're seeing it through the lens of their culture. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah, and and even before that, it was it was more like uh, we worship our God because our God is the strongest. And then once yeah. a different tribe came by, or different peoples came by and defeated your your religion, then you're like, oh, I guess this God is stronger than our God, so yeah. we're not going to worship our God anymore, and we're going to move on to this. And that was the yeah, an excellent thing that the that the Romans did that managed to keep the people together was absorb other gods into the pantheon. Or have them what you're using a different name. I think even eventually they took the names of the Greeks, right? There was a time when they just like switched over. Well, the, well, the, the Roman gods are basically copies of the Greek, like Jupiter yeah. is Zeus. Uh, you know, Apollo. What was it? Apollo became. Um, I should know this. I know. Well, like Poseidon and Neptune are the same. Um, Apollo is Mercury, right? I think so. Yeah. It's like it's like DC Comics and Marvel Comics, where yeah. there's like Superman and there's like the Sentinel. There's like um, Batman is like Iron Man. There's there's, there's kind of there's, there's the things where they kind of in some cases it's just like a direct boy where they're like you just take the color of this character. Like what what are you doing, people? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's one of the things that, that does oh, happen. Uh, Mar Mars and Aries were the same. Um, Aphrodite is Venus. Um, let's see here. Apollo. Oh, Apollo was Apollon in Greek. Uh, Hermes was. Oh, Hermes was Mercury. That's right. Yeah, Hermes and Mercury. Um, Artemis is Diana. Athena is Minerva. Yeah, I mean it's it's the same. It's the exact same gods. They're just going by different names. Thank you for listening. This has been a clip from an actual longer recording that I'll try to leave a link to on the screen or somewhere around here where you're listening to this. Pendants. <laughs> Pendants. 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 Peasants. Okay. <laughs> okay.